This video is the definitive guide for how to poop in the woods. Look nowhere else, search no more articles, stop your incognito page SEO Google search. This is the video for how to poop in the woods. Top to bottom, A to B, from coffee intake to butt outtake. This <laughs> is... <laughs> This is my show, gosh darn. When we talk about managing waste in the backcountry, we're mostly talking about how to deal with our poop and we're mostly following a set of principles from this organization called Leave No Trace. Leave No Trace guidelines have always said that we should bury our poop wherever possible and carry it out if we can't bury it. The biggest update is that the Leave No Trace Foundation has now said that whenever possible, you should carry out your poop and if you can't, then you should bury it. So that's a switch. If anyone anywhere, at any place where you were camping, has designated an area for going to the bathroom, go poop there. I like to refer to backcountry bathrooms as poo palaces. If you're not in an area where there is a pit toilet or where there is a place that's designated for pooping, then you have to dig a cat hole. A cat hole is a six to eight inch deep and at least four inch wide hole in the ground where you drop your deuce and then cover it up with some dirt. I am gonna show this to you in just a second. I'll take you out in the woods and I'll dig a hole for you. <laughs> Oops. The easiest way to dig a hole to poop in is to use a trowel. This is an ultralight trowel. This is a collapsible trowel. While this trowel is at least twice the weight as this trowel, it is way easier to dig a hole with this than it is with this. And this thing really weighs nothing, but look at this edge. And it's like serrated. I think it's like serrated for your comfort, but it's definitely not comfortable. Ripped for her it's pleasure. It's ripped for her pleasure. <laughs> So you have your trowel, essentially just a lightweight shovel. You'll use this to dig your hole at least six inches deep, four inches wide, and then you will aim carefully and poop in it. Let's say you don't have time to dig a hole. Let's be honest here. I've been there. Yeah, if you don't have time to dig a hole, just poop on the ground, move away from the pile of poop, dig your hole, and then use a stick to scoot the poop into the hole. You get real close with yourself when you're field hockey and a, yes. a turd into a hole. <laughs> Absolutely. And most of my backcountry turds are like, they're not like the consistency of rabbit poops. They're like the consistency of sorbet. Anyway, so right now what I have in my poop kit is this happy bottom bidet, a lightweight trowel, and a small bag with some toilet paper. So first up, let's talk about this bidet. The way that this bidet works is that you fill the main compartment with water, this part here, and then you screw this lid on. And then when it's full of water, you pull this part out and then you squeeze it. And this shower spray here directs a stream of water at your butt. I was gonna try and find a nice way to say butt, but there is none. This has revolutionized pooping in the woods for me. It's super lightweight, easy to use. I just absolutely adore this. There are also ultralight bidets that screw onto smart water bottles, but I just like cannot get my head around the idea of using my drinking water bottle as a bidet also. I go with the happy bottom bidet. You might have noticed I also carry toilet paper in a small bag. Having toilet paper and a bidet for me is a guarantee that I'll always have one option for how to stay clean. There are a few key ways that you have to think about how to deal with your dirty, poopy TP. Whenever possible, you should carry out your poopy toilet paper. There's a couple different ways to do this. One would be to use a wag bag, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Another option is just to use two Ziploc bags. If you don't wanna look at your poopy toilet paper, you can cover them in like duct tape or get ones that are opaque so you don't have to see the poopy toilet paper through it. It's opaque. It's opaque. It's O-P-A-Q-U-E. Oh my God, the pronunciation is opaque. It is opaque. The Q is the G. Opaque. <laughs> <laughs> I am never saying opaque. <laughs> I have pooped in my hole. I have taken out. I clean toilet paper, wipe my butt, and now you have poopy toilet paper. You are going to put this into a baggie, like so, and then you're gonna put this into another baggie. See how the openings are facing away from each other? Yes, that's intentional. I would keep this with your poop kit. I will keep this bag with my clean toilet paper, and then I will have my double bagged dirty toilet paper, like this, and that goes with my bidet, and then with my trowel, just like that, cool. Ah. This all fits really nicely in this bag that came with the Happy Bottom Bidet, and that makes this a really compact poop kit for me. You do not need to put dirty toilet paper 
in your bear canister with your food. That does not belong there. That is for good smells, not for poop smells. I have shown you my poop kit. Let's talk about cleaning your hands. So I use this Dr. Bronner's unscented soap for pretty much every cleaning thing at camp. You can also use hand sanitizer. Keep in mind that hand sanitizer is not as effective as soap and water. So if you do choose to use hand sanitizer for the ease, that's fine. But soap and water is more effective at cleaning germs. I have strong opinions about this topic in case you can't tell. <laughs> cool. If you are in an area where you can bury your poop, the steps are find soft ground, dig a hole, poop in the hole, use your trowel or your foot or a stick to move the dirt on top of your poop, pack out your toilet paper or use your bidet, clean your hands. It's not enough to just talk about it. We're gonna demo it. Let's go. So this ground that I have in front of me here is like kind of covered in um, like sticks and stuff. So what I'm gonna do is just use my heel to kind of kick some of that out of the way first. So one piece of advice is to not wait until you desperately have to poop to dig your hole. If you can see how I'm standing right now, this is like perfect pooping position. And so if you like are prairie dogging, the poop's gonna come. I've like already hit rocks. <laughs> So I've dug my hole. So from all the stuff that I scooted away, down to the bottom of this hole is about six inches. It is plenty wide. That's the perfect pooping hole. I used this trowel, which made this a lot easier. If I am ever using my lightweight trowel, one thing that I'll do with this is to actually stick it in the ground rather than trying to like use my hand to dig a hole, which can be kind of painful. I'll sometimes like stick it in the ground like this and I'll use my foot to create some leverage. If you're using toilet paper, you're just gonna poop in your hole, use your toilet paper to wipe yourself, carry out that toilet paper like I showed you, or you're gonna put it in the bottom of this hole and then take a stick and like shove it down in there. And then obviously you have one dirty hand, so wash your hands before you touch your trowel again or anything. Before I'm ready to like poop in this hole, I'm gonna get a couple things ready. First one is my bidet. So what I'm gonna do is put some clean water in here you will want the entire bottle full of water to clean your butt. I'm gonna screw the cap on, and now I have this all ready to go when I'm done pooping. And now we're on to the poop part. So the next step is to squat over the hole and poop. What I do is just like plant my feet on either side of the hole like this and just drop it low. Yeah. You will develop really good butt awareness as you poop in the woods more often. Just like get in touch with your anus and direct it over the hole. <laughs> you look at the hole, you aim for the hole, and you just release the Kraken. Release the Kraken! Have I occasionally missed the hole? Absolutely. It's like, as you're pooping, you're like, oh no, I'm not in the hole. What you don't want to do is be like, <sighs> if I like squat down and poop and I realize I'm missing the hole, I'll be like, ah, whatever, it's fine. I'll just finish pooping. And then I will just use a stick or a rock to just like kick my turds into the hole I dug. After I poop, it's time to clean myself with the bidet. This is why I leave this so close by when I'm going to the bathroom because I don't wanna to have to like shuffle walk over somewhere with shit on my butt. I'm going to just apply pressure on the bidet and get ready for some water action. So I'll position it like this. This is my butt. I'm just holding this bidet underneath myself and squirting it until I like feel it hitting. I wanna to apologize to my dad, who I know is gonna watch this video. Thanks for supporting me <laughs> in my dreams of being a YouTuber. <laughs> this is easier for me to do from the front. It might be easier for you to do from the back. Same idea applies. I will do this until this bottle is completely empty. Ooh, squatting down like this makes me kind of have to poop. For me, squatting over a hole and pooping like that has taken some practice, but it's not too hard. If it is hard for you, there are a couple things that you can do. Also, if you like take a long time to poop, Gentlemen, if this is hard for you, there are a couple things you can do. One option is to lean forward a little bit or to like put a stick in the ground or like a log in front of you or position yourself in such a way you can kind of lean forward on something. Another really good option is to lean against a tree. If you dig your hole close to a tree or if you are gonna be carrying out your poop, you can kind of lean like against the tree and poop like this. One thing to keep in mind in this position is that you have a lot more distance between your butt and the ground, so there's potential for splatter. So as low as you can go, the better. 
Another really common one is to put your, to find like a log and to sit down on the log and kind of like scoot your butt back so it's over the edge of the log. All I'm trying to do is get my butt as close to the ground as possible so that there's very little distance between the bottom of the hole and my butt and just aiming. So now I've pooped in my hole. I have used my bidet. I have dropped my toilet paper in there if I've used my toilet paper. Now I have a hole full of poo. I'm gonna take all this loose dirt that I dug up and I'm just gonna scoot it into the hole. Once I'm certain that I have totally covered my poop, I will sometimes do one of these. And then depending on where you're camping or backpacking, you might wanna mark it so that nobody else poops there. Sometimes people will stick a stick like directly in the ground, like so. This to me just feels like a hazard, so I don't do that. My recommendation is just to Pack it down nicely, cover it with a rock if you want to. My bigger thing is like, as you are looking for a good spot to dig a hole, keep an eye out for ground that looks like it's recently been dug up. You probably don't want to dig there again. This is why I love the bidet so much. But toilet paper, you're like always running the risk of getting poop on your hands. Whereas with a bidet, I'm never touching poop and I can go an entire backpacking trip without ever having the possibility of getting feces on my fingers. You know what you don't want when you're backpacking is fecal fingers. What happens if you are in an area where you don't have the materials to carry out your poop, but you also can't dig a hole? This could be something like a really rocky area, a place where the ground is frozen. There are a couple of different options. One is to lift a heavy rock. If you really have to poop and you don't know what to do, you can always lift up a really heavy boulder and then poop and then put the boulder back where it was. The reason we do that is one, that it still covers up our poop. It still kind of spreads it out. It puts it in a damp, moist environment where it's more likely to decompose quickly, where animals aren't gonna get to it real quick, just generally where it's not gonna bother anybody. If you can dig a hole, you should dig a hole. But if you have to lift a heavy rock to poop, you can do that. I wanna really quickly touch on poop tubes and carrying out your poop. All right, so this is a poop tube. A poop tube, is a sealed container where you put bags of poop. You open this thing up, you take your dog bag of human poop and you put it into here and then seal it to carry it out. My poop tube is a three inch diameter PVC pipe, a three inch cap, and then a rubber cap with this metal tightener, paracord, and a little nut for tightening and loosening the metal piece. So basically what I'm left with is this like deep tube where I can stack bags of poop and then I have an easy way to carry out my human waste and then just dump all those bags into the trash can when I get back home. That's a poop tube. So this is a wag bag. It's sometimes called a blue bag, but inside this little kit, we have Ziploc sealed bag, a little bit of toilet paper, a moist towelette, and then we have the actual bag that has this deodorizing powder in the bottom of it that also sucks the moisture out of your poop. Once it's a dehydrated solid turd, it smells a lot less, then you can carry it out a lot more easily. So here's the great big wag bag. So there's our powder. So these are actually designed to be pooped in. This has a long end and a short end. What you might do is squat over it and then just hold it around your body. Imagine a butt. And then just poop directly into the bag. Take your toilet paper, clean yourself off, chuck that in the bag. Take your moist towelette, clean your hands off, chuck that in the bag, tie this up, open up this other bag, put your poop in here, and then seal it up. Quick PSA, on the last How to Poop in the Woods video that I did, there were a lot of comments asking why it was important that we manage our poop outside when animals like bears or squirrels or raccoons just poop on the ground. The reason that we talk about the best way to manage human waste in the backcountry is not because we're trying to be a bunch of like poop restrictors or anything. Think about the food that you eat during the day. All that food that you eat, combined with everything else that we intake into our bodies, creates waste that is really high in bacteria. We don't want that to just be like out in the open in the wilderness because animals can come and pick up those bacteria and that's really harmful to them. The reason that bear poop is not a big deal is because bears eat stuff in the habitat where they're pooping. Not to mention, if everybody just went out in the woods and pooped in the woods, there would just be human poop all over the place. Like, we have the, the ability to go, this is probably not a good idea. I should probably deal with my poop. Whereas a bear is definitely not out there being like, this is not a good idea, and I should probably bury my poop. Bear doesn't care. Big bear, don't care. The end. Be a good steward of the environment. So that is how to poop in the woods. I have covered poop kits, how to manage poop, and the best practices for dealing with human waste in the backcountry. But every park and area is gonna be a little bit different. 
So if you have any questions about what you should do with your poop while you're camping, definitely follow the restrictions and guidelines on the state specific or park specific websites. This might be my favorite topic, but I think I've officially covered it completely. So if you have any questions about how to poop in the woods, let me know in the comments below. As always, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the wild. Happy pooping. Are you still with me? Have I said poop 20 times? We like lost half their attention on the video because I said poop too much. I know, I just said b so many times. Team, I'm just worried about the moms and I'm worried about the parents out there being like, oh, this lady says b so much.